I want to welcome you all out to this opportunity we have to come and to, to share our memories and share our love for Sister Pat Coyle, or Sister Lois Patricia Coyle. My name is Jim Spencer. I am uh, in the bishopric here in the Suncrest Ninth Ward, where she was a, a member of our congregation. And, uh, she has asked me to uh, conduct the meeting today. Um, we appreciate uh, uh, some adjustments. Uh, for some of you, you may notice today, uh, Pat asked very specifically to have a very brief service that, uh, uh, and have it be graveside. And so today we're graveside because of the heat. <laughs> We've now brought in, uh, we've now brought in uh, some covering just to keep you all cool. So uh, should, we want to welcome everybody who's here, and as well as those joining us on the broadcast today, uh, who couldn't make it here uh, to celebrate with us. Because of her wishes to have a very brief graveside uh, opportunity, we will dispense with a few of the normal uh, aspects that you'd expect today. We'll be very brief here today. Uh, we'll. Uh, move forward at this point by having an opening prayer by her daughter, Sister Danny Coyle, uh, and then uh, uh, we'll begin our service. Dearest Father, we thank Thee so very much for all my many blessings. We thank Thee, Father, for the opportunity we've had to have Pat Coil with us, that we've been able to learn and grow and understand the plan of salvation and that we will see her again. We thank you, Father, for her love and devotion to family and friends and for the opportunity we've had to learn from her. We thank you for this time to be able to have her here to teach us and to share her sense of humor and her devotion to thee. We ask thee, Father, that thy spirit be with us this day. That's what I thought. We ask thee for thy peace that may enter our hearts and help us to feel thee near and understand. We love thee and thank thee so very much for all thy many, many blessings and for thy son and his atonement and his being in our lives. And we say this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our uh, service today will go as follows. We will. Uh, First, uh, have Brother Ken Coyle, Pat's son, uh, read a eulogy of Sister Coyle. Uh, Pat asked for uh, one thing with this service, and that was that she wanted to, to hear the Tabernacle Choir sing her favorite hymn. Well, then, well, after the Coyle's done, we'll hear that hymn, and then she asked that I share a few words.
She gave us very clear instructions for what she wanted, no funeral, just a small private graveside service. And she even gave us a demonstration of it. My dad died 14 years ago. She put together his service, just a, a handful of family and close friends, and a very brief but beautiful gathering at the cemetery. And she told me she wanted the same. And I really tried to do as I was told, which I admit is something I rarely did when she was raising me. <laughs> but it quickly became apparent that a small graveside service would not be practical or even possible. There are too many people who wanted to be here, and we didn't want to turn anyone away. So, Mom, I'm doing the best to do as you said. And I will try to keep the service brief and simple as you asked. But it's not my fault that you had so many people who loved you. That's all on you. <laughs> I wrote these remarks down thinking that uh, if I was focused on reading them, maybe I would keep my composure and not fall apart. That didn't work out. <laughs> As I began putting together these remarks, this non-eulogy for my mom, because of course she didn't want a eulogy or any fuss, I started thinking about stories from my life with her that I could share. And there's no shortage of these stories. My sisters and I spent a week together with my mom very recently, and the stories flowed in a continuous stream. We gathered around my mom to honor her wish to transition from curative medical care to hospice. And despite the, the painful and somber nature of our reunion, it was really a wonderful week together. We talked and we laughed and we did jigsaw puzzles together. And mom said that she felt better than she had in months. It was easy to forget why we were there and live in those moments. And I'm so glad we did. Thinking about that week of laughter and stories, I wanted to share one from my own childhood that shows the kind of mom Pat Boyle was. Selfless, caring, and endlessly patient. And if you know her four kids, you know that that last virtue was required. <laughs> when we lived in California, there was a big park in there that uh, I called the Dragon Slide Park. It was about 45 minutes from our house. It had these two giant slides that ran down the side of a big hill. And at the top of each slide, there was a, a metal tunnel structure that was painted like a dragon's head. So that when you were using the slide, you would exit through the dragon's mouth and slide down its tongue. As you might imagine, to a six-year-old boy, that was the greatest thing in the world. So as my seventh birthday approached, all I wanted to do was spend the day with my friends at the dragon slide park. Well, as it turned out, Mom woke up on the day of my birthday party feeling very sick. She had headache, fever, nausea, the whole thing. She just felt miserable. As a chivalrous and compassionate seven-year-old, I recognized how bad she felt. And I went to her and I said that we didn't have to go to the Dragon Slide Park if she didn't want to. She said it was my birthday and we would still go. Well. My chivalry did not extend to the point of insisting, so I don't think I even tried to hide my glee as I skipped away to get ready to go for my day of fun. My friends all got dropped off at our house. Mom wanted us into the van, drove us to the park, where she sat on a bench with her aching head in her hands while half a dozen screaming boys ran wildly around her. After reaching some balance of not quite long enough for me and way too long for Mom, we gathered back at the van, opened my birthday presents, and then we loaded up and headed home. And Mom even stopped at the Thrifty's Five and Dime for ice cream cones on the way. It was the happiest birthday of my entire childhood. When I shared that memory with Mom a few weeks ago, she didn't remember it. To her, it was just another day of being a mom. To me, it was an act of pure love. And really, that's what being a mom is. It's a lifetime of simple acts of pure love. That's what my mom was to me. And I'm so thankful that she showed me what a mother's love could be so that I could grow up and find a wife who could bring that kind of love to my home and teach our own children to love with their whole hearts.
You're all here today because you have your own stories and memories and experiences with my mom. You're here today because you knew and loved her in your own way. So now, as we listen to a rendition of her favorite hymn, Where Can I Turn for Peace, sung by the Tabernacle Choir, she requested. I would like all of you to think about your own time with my mom and remember the moments that made you want to be here to say goodbye. A part of me died with my mom, but a bigger part of her lives on in all of us. The people she touched and the people whose lives were made brighter by knowing her. Thank you. 
beautiful hymn. Not many people are able to have the Long Tabernacle Choir attend uh, a tribute to someone who loved music so much. Um, I uh, feel very lucky and blessed myself for having had Sister Pat Coyle in my life. And for being able to get to know the rest of her family so well the last few weeks. We're lucky to have Danny in our ward and be a neighbor of ours. And, and uh, over the last few weeks, I've had a chance to go over and visit with Pat and uh, talk with her and meet her other kids. And I, I feel very lucky and privileged for that as well. Um, I know uh, one thing is if Pat uh, saw us all get emotional with this, she, she'd be upset and tell us not at all. The last few years that I had a chance to get to know her, uh, she became uh, one of my close friends. Uh, she and I, uh, when I first was asked to serve in this area, she was helping with music. And boy, did she love music. And I look over here of all of you who I know shared that love with her, who are here to pay tribute. But I also learned that she liked to hold her ground and, and uh, would tell me when I was out of line, and she'd also give in when I could share an al alternate perspective with her. So this last week, I feel I've had several conversations with her. As, uh, as we realized that uh, doing this outdoors wasn't going to be possible and that I, I feel that she's 100% behind where we're at today and what we're doing. And, and she asked, and I felt she, as she asked for me to be a part of this uh, day and, and part of this, I felt like the best thing, tribute I could give to her today was to share with you, in my words, some of the things that I've been able to witness that she believed and things that she knew were important in this life to help us get through. Never is the veil thinner, in my life anyway, than a birth or a death. And when we have a dear friend or a close family member or a mother, a sister, an aunt, uncle, or aunt in this case, pass, we sometimes do some introspection. And we look at those things in our life of where we're at and where they're at and, and what they did. And one of the things that I think Sister Pat helped teach me and remind me of was that Regardless of the challenges we go through in this life, you can find peace. And you can be at peace with your soul. I remember a few weeks ago, she was here. Every week she was able to make it to church. I tried to get off the stand quickly and visit because I knew she'd uh, either be uh, headed uh, home these last few weeks as things got really tough. And, uh, but uh, I'd always make rounds around the building, make sure all the classes got started right. And I'd always stop at the library where, where she and her good friend Joyce were always there serving the people of the board. And I'd always take a few minutes and visit with her, and I'd get the latest update of the week and what was going on and, and uh, where she was at. And she'd share with me that her whole goal all week was just to be able to make it to church. And uh, that's what she worked for every week. And that testimony of why that was important to her speaks to my soul. And let me share with you, I think sometimes we often think that the plan of salvation and that this death is sometimes a, at the end. And I promise you that it's not. And I know she believed it was not. We talked just a week or so ago when her family was here. We talked about uh, what she was going through and where she's at. I shared with her that uh, uh, I had a Another friendship at this point in life was graduation, and that she was finally able to graduate. Boy, she liked that idea, and that she was she's just graduating. I think she's just graduated on to continue on and to help us uh, continue on. As, as we think of this plan of salvation and, and the peace that we can find here, I know Sister Coyle believed in the fact that Jesus Christ was her Savior. And oftentimes we talk about the Savior, and we talk about the atonement of Jesus as being something that we can use to help repent. But there are two meanings. There's another purpose of the atonement, and that's the enabling power. And I think it's that enabling power that she understood better than some of us do and that some of us are still learning that helped her continue on in, those, in that time of, of when her body was betraying her and failing her and, uh, and she was dealing with those pains, but she still always had a cheery disposition. As I got to know her over the years and got to hear some of the, trial, the trials and challenges of her life, I know she leaned on that. I 
know she wouldn't have done that. I know she'd want me to share with you, to encourage you to lean on that. That as you go through this transition time, to think of those things that are important in life. I think also she'd believe, that, like I do, and I've shared this with a few of you before, that uh, I think this life, we're all just toddlers. And uh, I've often asked, uh, and uh, I bet if I asked uh, Ken and Danny here and, and others, uh, you know, who, who taught you how to walk when you were a toddler? And uh, uh, I know there's others on the broadcast and others here who she may have taught, but I want you all to think about who helped you walk, when you learn how to walk. And, and uh, how many of us would ever give up on a toddler when they fall down? You know? uh, Danny, you think you fell down a few times <laughs> when you were learning to walk? But who was always there to give you a helping hand and let you up? Your mom. And I think she was just a living example of what the Savior is for us here in this life, is that we're toddlers. Uh, and no matter where we're at in our lives and what we're toddling along with, if we trip and we fall, I guarantee you there's always going to be a hand there to help pick you up. The love of the Savior is there, and Pat knew that. Never did I see her so excited as uh, a couple of years ago, she and Joyce, uh, her dear friend and roommate, had just gotten back from Palmyra. And I was doing my lap around that Sunday and stopped into the library to talk to him and see how it was. And, Oh boy, you thought I would have, it was a birthday party for a seven-year-old. They were so excited to both be telling me all of the experiences and the spirit they felt. And I think that joy is what I will remember most about Sister Boyle. Is that she loved the Savior. She loved her testimony. But she understood a real important principle that I'll end my remarks with with you today. And I think that's why she loved that hymn so much. Is that the Savior in teaching his apostles at the end of his mortal life, he shared with them a really important principle that I continue to gain a better understanding of. Him. And in that discourse that he shared with them, he said, Peace I give unto you. My peace I give unto you. And I've often thought, what did he mean by that? He says, Not as the world give I unto you. So what do we think of as peace in this life may be? Having the kids turn the music down or turn the music off in the car or sitting in a quiet place. And I propose to you today that Sister Coyle understood that peace was knowing that she was in a good place with her Heavenly Father and that she could endure any challenges given her. And that as we go through those challenges in life, if we search for the blessing of our peace, we can endure any of the challenges given to us. We can make it through transitions of relationships of transitions of jobs, transitions of a crazy world out there, as well as the transition of separation and death. I share with you my testimony and my understanding that it's through us holding true to those things that she represented so much that we can find that peace and endure to the end, just like that last night or two, the bishop and I got a chance to go over and give her a blessing. And she shared with us for a minute. She goes, man, how come this has to be so miserable? <laughs> she says, but I'll make it. You know, I'll do it just fine. And, and uh, she knew that it was close, but again, she was at peace. So I challenge you to share with you today to find that peace for yourself. When things are hard and challenged and you're wondering where to turn, turn to your Savior for peace. Where do you turn for peace? I'll just require that answer, regardless of your circumstances. I share these thoughts with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We'll now have a uh, benediction given by Sister Joyce Benson, one of Pat's dear friends. We'll then ask everybody to stay seated and we'll give some instruction.
what Brother Spencer said. She did bring peace to somebody. She brought peace in, into our home. We enjoyed many good times. I just want to thank my Heavenly Father for the privilege I've had of knowing her. It's pretty awesome around the house right now, so. As we close this meeting, we again want to thank thee for thy daughter Pat, for her sweet spirit, for the many blessings she brought into so many other others' lives. I want to thank her as a good friend for making my life joyous over the years. I want to thank my Heavenly Father for so many good memories. Again, I'm so thankful for families. We both knew that, both hers and mine. And we ask thee at this time that as we go to the cemetery and lay her to rest, that she will know that we will be missing her, that we will move on as she would wish for us to do at this time. Please protect all those that have joined us this day. And as we close this meeting, we pray for a blessing to be upon it. And we do it through thy son's holy name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Those who have been asked to be pallbearers, if they would come forward and step outside the door here to them.